Hey guys, Armando here from Armsina's Cookies. This is Karai. She's going to be in my jacket during this whole thing. You're not going to see her. She's at a bury away. But I'm going to do a follow-up to the last cookie cutter tutorial I made. The, um, the last one was like the intro guide. But at the time of making it, I didn't realize the website I used to create the quick model was going to be ending by the end of the year 2019. So that website is gone. It was cookiecaster.com. So this is a little bit more in depth in an effort to prevent this video from being too long. I'm going to basically just go through the process pretty fast without really explaining a lot of the whys. I will try to, in the description of the video below, answer some of the whys. And then, yeah, if you have any other questions, just feel free to comment and I'll respond. But um, yeah, let's get into this. So. This is all going to be how to create a 3D model of a cookie cutter of the shape of your choice. And it's all going to be done using websites that are free and software that's free. So start off, you need an image you want. So I'm on Google Images and it's Valentine's Day season. So I'm going to look for a heart. Okay, so I want a nice heart image to edit. It's a lot easier if the image itself is varying from the background and color. So I'm going to find a simple heart image and this looks pretty simple. Nice little shape. It's got a white background, red heart, so it should be pretty simple to Photoshop. So I'll right click and save it to my computer. From there, I will open this with a program called GIMP. GIMP is a free Photoshopping software that is fairly easy to use once you get the hang of things. I'm going to show you everything I do in this video to edit my images ready for 3D modeling. Okay, so we got a white background, red heart, easy to edit. To simplify things, I like to go to colors and threshold and adjust this bar until I get like a nice solid black and white image. That looks pretty good. So I want to completely separate this heart from the background. So I go to this paint bucket tool and I'm going to use that to fill in the background color with a different color. So I could use any random color. I'm just going to pick a simple red and then everything that's not the heart is now red. And then I will go up here to this little icon. You could also go to select and I'm basically going to select by color. So I'm going to select and then select by color. Then you click on the color you want to select. So I'm going to click the red. So everything that's red now is selected, but I want to select the other thing. So I'll go to select and invert. So now everything that's not red will be selected. And then I can go to edit and cut. And that cuts everything out and it gives me this nice clean shape of a heart. So go back to select and I will select none. I'll go back to my paint bucket tool. But now I want to make the color black. And then I will fill in the heart now we've got a nice solid black heart with a red background i am going to back to select by color select the black and then i will edit cut edit paste and after you paste it's a new layer in this photoshopping software so i'll press layer it's a new layer so now we have a whole new layer of just this heart so now i can get rid of this background image and we have this nice solid heart so this is the part where you want, however big you want your cookie cutter to be, you want to make your image that big as well. So I usually make our cookie cutters about 4.5 inches at its longest length. So I will start off by going to image, crop to content, which will basically cut off all the excess around this heart. So it's the image is the size of the heart. Now I will scale my image in this step. I move my format to inches, and I usually want my heart to be 4.5 inches, but for this process, I'm going to make it an inch bigger. So it looks like the, whatever the biggest length is, is the width in this scenario. So I will make this 5.5 inches wide. Press scale. Okay, and now I click on this icon, which will scale the layer I'm on. So I click that, and then I click on the heart. And now, change the format to inches and I will now make the longest point the width 4.5 inches. Scale that and now our heart is 4.5 inches of length. But we need to make three separate images starting from here. 
So I'm going to click on this little cross icon, which will you click and you can drag around. So I want to center this heart as best as I can do. Looks pretty good right here. Now I need to make a few more layers. So I'm going to click on back on this bottom layer that we made invisible. And I'm going to click this little icon down here, which will add a new layer. So click that, press OK. I'm going to add three of these. Two, three. So the one that's all the way on the bottom, I'm going to go back to my paint bucket tool. I'm going to make my color white and I'm going to make my background white. Now I'm going to go back up to this heart image. I am going to right click on this layer and press alpha to selection. Now there's a selection all around just the heart chick itself. I'm going to now save my first of three images. So I'm going to press file, export as, save it as heart. And then I'm going to do three of these. So I'm going to call this heart one dot JPEG. JPG is the type of file I'm saving it as. Then I'll press export. And uh, since I'm working on specific image sizes, I want the quality 100% and I will export this. So that has now saved that image here into my folder, into my computer. Now I'm going to, so this is still selected. Now I need to make a second image, but I need to grow the selection. I need to make it bigger. So I'm gonna press select, grow. And then the type of growth I'm gonna do by millimeters. And now this next, the second image is the size of the blade of the cutter. And I usually like to make our cookie cutters one millimeter thick is the part that cuts the cookie. So I'm making this one millimeter thick. And now this selection has grown a millimeter bigger than the original size. So I'm going to go back to the paint bucket tool. Not, but I want to make the color black just to match it. But then I click on the second layer down here. And I'll click the paint bucket tool inside the selection. And that gives me a bigger heart. I'm going to press file export as heart I'm gonna save it as heart 2 export and now we're gonna do this one more time this next layer is going to be for the handle of the cutter and I usually basically the bigger this is the more rigid your cutter is gonna be I usually go out by another six millimeters on my selection and then go down to this third layer and fill that in and file export as heart three now we have these three images on our computer next I'm going to go to a website called onlineconvert.com I will have a link to all of these programs and websites down below um, this basically I need to convert these images into a vector file more specifically an SVG file so I'm going to go to this website, which is free to use, click choose files. And then in my downloads folder where I save them, I have these three heart images. I can just click and drag to select all three, press choose. Okay. So the pictures are ready for conversion. Then I click start conversion and then you could download them individually, but I'm just going to download them all into a zip folder. So download all files as zip. And now they are all in this folder as SVG vector files. Now we go to a different website called Tinkercad.com. This is a free to use browser software that you can model your own 3D, 3D models. So I'm gonna go here, I'm already logged in. It's free to create an account. Click create new design. All right, now I'm on this work plane. So the first thing I wanna do is click import and then choose a file. So in my downloads, I'm going to go to that folder that we just saved those vector files. And I'm going to start with heart one and then work my way up to heart three. So I'll double click on heart one. So this is where you need to start thinking of size in terms of millimeters. You could just do quick conversion by Googling like 4.5 inches to millimeters. Uh, one thing I will point out though. So let's say 4.5 inches to millimeters. That gives you 114.3 millimeters, but that's going to be when you put it into this format, you want your length to be or the width, the longest dimension to be measuring that. 
but you got to take into account the handle size now. So I basically, whatever the size I want it to be, I make sure it's about 10 millimeters more in this format. So I want my width, in the case of this heart, to be, instead of 114.3 millimeters, I want it to be around 124 millimeters. Um, and I found for almost everything I do, no matter the size, if I, you scale this, so I put my scale by 31.5, which is 31.5%, and that gives me a width of about 124.7. It's a little bit more than I need, but it's, it's nice to work with. So. For some, I don't know if it's to work for you, but for me, 31.5 in the scale tends to be this, the magic number. So I'm going to press import. So this brings the image into here. And now I could click on it. And then I could change dimensions of this if I want. But I want to change the heights of these now. So if I click this little box in the middle, press that, then I could change this. This is going to be the middle of the cutter, the hole. So I'm going to put this in as 18 millimeters. And I'm right now it's selected as a solid. I'm gonna turn it into a hole. This is basically what I need right now. And I'll press import, choose file, part two. Back again to the magic number, 31.5. Import. Now I can, after this import, I'm going to click on it and click on the center box. And I like to make our cookie cutter 16 millimeters tall. Seems to be a big enough size for what we need. You could always make it bigger if you want. I'm going to do 16, enter. So now this is 16 millimeters in height. Um, and then I'm going to import the last one, which is going to be the handle. So heart three, 31.5, import. And then I click on this. So our handles, I like to make two millimeters tall. So if you right click on this, you can move it around and see. So we've got the first image, which is a hole. I'll show you why that is as it is now. And we got the second layer, which is the cutter part. And then we got the third image, which is our handle. So if I click and drag around this, it's gonna select all three of those images. And then if I click this little icon right here, it will group them all together and make it one model. So I'm gonna click that and look at that. So the whole cut out, the whole middle portion, and we're left with the cutter part and the handle. Um, one more important thing to do on this, after you do this, it's gonna, the image is gonna be mirrored from what you originally had. So select it again, and then click on this icon right here that says mirror. And then you're just going to change it this way. So this little dip used to be pointing this way, now it's pointing this way. For a simple shape like this, it doesn't matter too much, but if you could do more complex shapes, it's really important to remember that step. And now, basically, we're set to go from here. This is the file name. It defaults to some random name every time. Right now, it's terrific dupe. I'm just going to call this parts. And then I'm going to export this as an STL. So export, STL. Now that has created an STL file of a heart right here in my computer. If I right click on this and press quick look, here is our 3D model. And now this is all set to put into your slicer software, which will get it ready for your 3D printer. I use a program called Cura, which is a free program again, and this I will basically, from my folder, I will click on the heart that we just made, click and drag it into this program. And here it is in our slicer program. Click on this. You could change your dimensions by clicking on scale. You could scale this if you want. Right now it's showing about 114.3. I tend to scale these to 115, the longest dimension for most of our cutters. And if you have uniform scaling checked right here, um, after you press in one dimension, it's gonna automatically adjust these others, which will inevitably change the, the Z, which is how tall the cutter is. So I always like to make them 16. So after I scale it proportionally like that, I will click uniform scaling and change the Z back to 16. And this is all set to go for my printer. 
I already have my default settings in. I will quickly scroll through these for you if you want to try to mimic what the settings we use. I uh, print everything with, or we have a few 3D printers. Um, our main ones are a brand called Creality and we use the model CR10, which is a highly recommended uh, 3D printer by both in terms of size, uh, reliability and price point. Our first printer was a lot more expensive and has a lot more issues. So yeah, so you basically will save this to a memory card and put it into your printer and you're ready to go. Uh, hope that wasn't too confusing. Hopefully this wasn't too long and monotonous, monotonous, I don't know, boring. Sorry if this was boring, but if you have any questions, leave a comment. I will try my best to answer them in a timely manner. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, have a good day, and I hope this helps you make your own cookie cutters. Bye.